हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एमबीए करो दीज आर द सॉल्यूशंस ऑफ जैट 2022 क्यूएडीआई दिस टाइम जैट हैड आस्क्ड अ रिकॉर्ड 12 क्वेश्चंस ऑन डीआई सो देयर वर फोर डीआई सेट्स यूजुअली जैट यूज्ड टू आस्क टू टू थ्री डीआई सेट्स if you see the past papers also it used to be generally 3 di sets in 2023 it asked only two but this time there were four di sets and even there was one logic based di in fact uh, most of the di were logic based in this paper so let us look have a look at the solutions to the questions if you are new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media platforms let's start with the first question It says Sheila purchased two varieties of apples A and B for a total of rupees twenty eight hundred. The weights in kg of A and B purchased are in the ratio five ratio eight, but the cost of A is twenty percent more than that of B. Okay, and we need to find uh, that uh, she sells A and B with profits of fifteen percent and twenty percent respectively. What is the total profit in rupees? So let's start by taking the variables in a proper way. So A and B, it says weight is five ratio eight. So let us take five and eight. Okay, it is said that uh, cost per kg A is twenty percent more. So twenty percent more means one fifth more. So let us say cost is six. Uh, A B is five. So cost of A will be six, right? So cost per kg. And suppose they buy five kg and eight kg, so that means the total cost will be five into six thirty, and this is forty, right? Now it is given that she sells A and B with profits of fifteen percent and ten percent respectively. So now it is given that total purchase is for twenty eight hundred. So that means we are having seventy parts, which is for twenty eight hundred. So we will. multiply whatever we get by 40 okay now in this case she is making a profit of 15% so 15% profit if we find that is 4.5 and 10% in this case so 10% profit that means 4 rupees so if we add we get a profit of 8.5 now we are multiplying the numbers by a factor of 40 so multiply this by 40 Forty-eight is three twenty plus twenty three hundred and forty rupees is the total profit she made. So that is the answer. <coughs> so it is about taking the variables in a smart way. We took cost as five and six because it says twenty percent more. A supplier receives orders from five different buyers. Each buyer places their order only on a Monday. The first buyer places the order after every two weeks. The second buyer after six weeks, and the third buyer after every eight weeks. The fourth after four weeks, and the fifth after every three weeks. It is known that on January first, which was a Monday, each of these five buyers placed an order with the supplier. On how many occasions in the same year will these buyers place their orders together, excluding the order placed on January first? So there were a couple of questions that tested the concept of. Calendars as well. Now, if you look at this question, we know that it is an LCM based question, right? It says that same year place their orders together. So let us write buyer one, buyer two, buyer three, buyer four, and buyer five. So buyer one places order every two weeks. Second buyer six weeks. Third buyer eight weeks. Fourth buyer four weeks, and fifth buyer three weeks. So let us find the LCM of these. LCM of these is this is eight uh, six is twenty four, and twenty four is divisible by all. So LCM is twenty four. So they will place order every twenty four weeks. Now on January first they placed an order. Okay. Now if you talk about the same year, so the first will be in January four. And then twenty four weeks later and forty uh, eight weeks later, so there will be three occasions: January one, twenty four week later, and forty eight weeks later. That will be the same year. Okay. After this, you know that there are fifty two weeks in a year. 
so there are only three occasions now read the question carefully it says excluding january 1st so we do not have to count january 1st there are two more such occasions where these buyers place order together okay if the word excluding was not mentioned then the answer would have been three there was a similar question like this we will see that later the sum of the cubes of two numbers is 128 while the sum of the reciprocals of their cubes is 2 what is the product of the squares of the numbers okay so let's do it in a very simple way it's a very it was a very simple question sum of cubes so let's say the numbers are x and y so x cube plus y cube is equal to 1 to 8 okay sum of reciprocals of their cubes reciprocal is 1 upon x cube and 1 upon y cube it is equal to 2 now if you simplify it it becomes x cube y cube plus x cube upon x cube y cube is 2 now we know this part is 128 so this means this is 64 so x cube y cube is 64 so x y will be equal to 4 because its cube is 4 cube is 64 so this means x square y square is 16 it says product of the squares of the numbers so the answer is 16 next question some members of a social service organization in kolkata decided to prepare for 2400 laddus to gift to children in various orphanages and slums in the city during durga puja the plan is that each of them makes the same number of laddus however on the laddu making day 10 members are absent and each remaining member makes 12 laddus more than earlier decided. How many members actually make the laddus? Okay. Now there are two ways. One is quadratic equation way. One is option way. So we will see both the approaches. We will use quadratic equation also and then see that we can do by options also. So let us say we have to make 2400 laddus and we have to let us say there were n people. So, laddus per person will be 2400 upon n. Okay. Now, what is happening is that on the laddu making day, 10 members are absent. Now, actually, the number of people turns out to be n minus 10. And how many laddus will each person make? This will be the number of laddus that is made and this is given as 12 laddus more than earlier decided. So earlier uh, they were making these many laddus. So this is plus 12. Okay, So this is the equation that we will get. Okay, So earlier they, they were making these many laddus. And now they have to make 12 extra laddus per person. So this is number of people. This is laddus per person. Now this is the equation that we need to solve. So we need to multiply by n, n minus 10. And this is 2400. So we can take it 200 upon. Uh, when we multiply by entire thing by n, n minus 10. So what will happen? This n minus 10 will get cancelled. It becomes 200 n plus that is equal to this is 200 because 12 is common okay so we can reduce uh, by a factor of 12 so this becomes uh, n will get cancelled n minus 200 times of n minus 10 okay and this is uh, 12 12 will get cancelled it is n into n minus 10 so this is the equation that you will get like if you want to write the original equation you can write like this 2400 n okay is equal to 2400 n minus 10 plus 12 n n minus 10 so you can take out 12 as a common factor and you will get this equation okay so further solving the equation we will get let's write uh, this lhs on the right hand side on the left hand side n square minus 10 n plus 200 n okay, minus 2000 is equal to 200 n. So 200 n gets cancelled. So it is 
n square minus 10 n minus 2000 equals to 0 right so we see that 50 and 40 so n minus this is n minus 50 and n plus 40 that becomes 0 so n is equal to 50 okay now what was n n is the original number of people okay so you should be careful by uh, as soon as you get a variable you should not get mark it as the answer n is the number of people who are making laddus now the question is how many members actually make the laddus so 10 people were absent so 40 people will make the laddus okay so this is quadratic equation way initially 50 people were supposed to make laddus so now you can verify also using options so how to do now 24 like if there are 90 people you will get this number in decimals right 2400 by 90 is how much 240 that is 80 by 3 26.67 laddus okay now if there were 100 people so this is the actually making laddus so originally should have been 100 so originally would have been 24 okay so this is not a difference of 12 originally 60 34 110 and 50 okay now if there are 50 people so they are making 48 laddus if they were 60 they would have made 40 so difference is of 8 so not is the answer not the answer 24 is 100 laddus they are making okay if they were 34 people you will get in decimal so that is also not the answer originally 24 laddus and uh, new number is 24 originally something in decimal so again not the answer originally 60 laddus and divide by 50 it is 48 the difference is 12 so that is the answer so this should have been a, an approach in such a question using options because five options are there right and we saw that in two cases it was in decimals so we know that this is the actual number of people and this is the uh, the uh, initial number so initial put 10 say increase kar do, actual ke comparison mein 10 increase kar do, and see that if the difference turns out to be 12. So that's a better approach than solving quadratic equation because it takes time to write the equation and solve it. Okay, so let's look at the next question. Ramesh and Reena are playing with triangle ABC. Interesting people playing with triangles. I never played with triangles when I was a child. Ramesh draws a line that bisects BAC. Okay, so they are playing with some triangle and it says that ABC is a triangle. So let's draw any random triangle as of now. And then if we figure out something, we'll draw the proper triangle. Ramesh draws a line that bisects angle BAC. So he draws an angle bisector. Then this line cuts BC at D. So this is D. Rena that extends point AD to point P. Okay, so this is extended to point P. In response, Ramesh joins B and P. So Ramesh has joined these points. Okay, you do not need to worry who is doing what. Right? Ultimately, you have to find the length of the side. Okay, then uh, Rena announces that BD bisects angle PBA. Okay, BD is bisecting pba so this angle is equal to this angle right what a surprise together ramesh and reena found that bd is equal to six centimeter so bd is six centimeter okay ac is equal to nine centimeter dc is equal to five centimeter okay and dp is equal to five centimeter we need to find the length of ap right now here we have this theorem called angle bisector theorem okay angle bisector theorem says that if you draw an angle bisector let us say this is the angle bisector of a triangle so let's say this is x this is y this is a and this is b so x upon a is equal to y upon b that is what the theorem says or you can say that x upon y is equal to a upon b so either you take the ratio this way like a ratio a or you can also take the ratio like a vertical manner okay so i hope we have drawn the diagram correctly let us just revisit it abc triangle tha. then uh, bac is bisected so it is at point d 
and then AD is extended to P and this also bisects B, BD bisects angle PBA. So, this is also bisected. Okay, And then we have uh, BD is equal to 6 and then uh, we have uh, this side as DC is equal to 5 and BP is equal to 8. Okay, so this is 8 and DP is equal to 5. So these are the sides that are given to us. Now, when we look at triangle ABC, okay, so when we look at this triangle, so let us say this length is x. So we have x upon 6 is equal to 9 upon 5, right? This ratio is equal to this ratio. Or you can say x upon 9 is equal to 6 upon 5, it does not matter. So x is 9 into 6, 54 by 5 or 10.8. So this value is 10.8. Now let us look at this triangle. Let us say this length is y. That is what we need to find. Okay. We have to find AP. So let us say this length is y. Now this is an angle bisector. Okay. In an angle bisector, what we say that x upon y this upon this will be equal to this upon this 8 upon 5 okay so we can say that y is equal to 5x upon 8 which is 5 into 10.8 upon 8 or 54 upon 8 which is 6.75 8 6 of 48 6 upon 8 is 0.75 so this length is 6.75 Okay. Now we have to find the length AP. AP is AD plus DP. 6.75 plus 5. The answer is 11.75. So very good question on triangles. You need to know the theorem of angle by the angle bisector theorem. So it is applied twice in this triangle and you get the answer which is 11.75. Now this is uh, a trait of cat uh, ZAD questions that they build a story around questions. Okay, people are playing with triangles. They will not directly say that this is a triangle and give the figure. So, answer is 11.75. A marble is dropped from a height of 3 meters onto the ground. After hitting the ground, it bounces and reaches 80% of the original height from which it was dropped. This repeats multiple times. Each time it bounces, the marble reaches 80% of the height previously reached. Eventually, the marble comes to rest on the ground. What is the maximum distance that the marble travels from the time it was dropped until it comes to rest? Okay. So, we see that it is dropped from 3 meters. Now, it will rise 80% okay, and then go down again. Then rise 80% and then go down again. Then 80% down again and so on right so this is basically it will be 2.4 1.92 if you calculate but not need to calculate now what is happening is we it is forming a gp so where common ratio is 0 0.8 or 4.4 upon 5 okay and if you see it is happening twice so when it bounces down uh, bounces up it goes down as well it goes up it goes down as well but in the first instance, when we are dropping it from 3 meter, it goes only in one direction. So basically the GP is, infinite GP is multiplied by 2. So let us do one thing. Let us add a dummy variable. Let us say this is also 3 up and we will remove that 3 meters. Okay. So the sum of the GP is 2 times. Why 2 times? Because once up, another time down, up, down, up, down and so on. So 2 times of a upon 1 minus r. A is 3. Infinite GP sum is A upon 1 minus r. 1 minus r is 0.8. You can just put 0.8. Right. So that is the distance. So 2 into 3 by 0 0.2. Right. So this is 10 times which is 30. But we will remove this 3 meter. Why 3 meter? Because we just added dummy. Right. It is not bouncing twice in this direction. It is just going down in this direction. So remove that 3 meter, you get the answer as 27 meters.
which is the right answer. Here's the next question. Fatima found that the profit earned by the Bala Dosa stall today is a three digit number. She also noticed that the middle digit is half of the leftmost digit, while the rightmost digit is three times the middle digit. She then randomly interchanged the digits and obtained a different number. This number was more than the original number by 198. What is the middle digit of the profit amount? Okay, so we have to play with numbers. Number based question. So there is a three digit number. Middle digit is half the leftmost digit. So we have leftmost digit, middle digit, right digit. Middle digit is half of the leftmost digit. So let us say this is 2x, this is x, and the rightmost digit is three times the middle digit. So we have 3x as the digit. Right now, when we interchange the digits and uh, and when we take the difference, we get 198. Right. So this number, when we are saying that uh, that this number is more than the original number. So this is original number and the change number is so change number will be. Now this digit is 2x, this is x, this is 3x. Now the change number is more, so these digits will be 3x, x and 2x. Okay. Now we see or it could be or it, there is another possibility that 3x will be the first digit, 3x, 2x and x. Right. Now these are the digits. What does that number signify? Number means this is hundreds place. This is tens place, this is units place. So this number is 300x plus 10x plus 2x. So that is 312x or this could be 321x. And if you look at this number, the original number, this is 213x. So when we take the difference, it is 99x or the difference could be 108x also. Now the difference is given as 198. So this will not give an integer value. So this is not possible. So 99x is 198. So that means x is equal to 2. And what is asked? We are asked the middle digit. So middle digit is 2. Okay. So when we take a three digit number and we reverse it, the difference is a multiple of 99. Okay. So this gives us that the middle digit is 2. But you must take this, this case also into consideration. It is uh, uh, like uh, we got the answer because this was not giving an integer value of x. Had it given an integer value of x, we might have had two answers also. So it is always uh, a good practice to take all the possibilities and then reject the cases. Okay, so this is again our question based on time, uh, this calendar based question. It says Kim's wristwatch always shows the correct time, including AM and PM. Jim's watch is identical to Kim's watch in all aspects except its pace, which is slower than the pace of Kim's watch. At 12 noon on January 1st, Jim sets his watch to the correct time, but an hour later, it shows 12.57 p.m. At 12 noon on the next June 1st, uh, Jim resets his watch to the correct time. How many instances between and including 12 noon on the two dates mentioned, do Jim's and Kim's watches show the exact same time, do, including the a.m. and the p.m.? Okay, so uh, it says that uh, that these are the timings. Okay, so uh, let's see this. It says that at 12 noon, it is reset and hour later it becomes 12.57. So in one hour, clock loses. Three minutes. Now, when this is a tricky question because it involves AM and PM concept. 
If AM and PM concept was not given, it was just given that the clock shows this. Okay, so the clock shows the same time after twelve hours. Okay, so let's say it is uh, eight AM. So the clock will show eight AM, eight. Eight, the exact hands at 8 pm but in this case am pm are distinct that it shows am as well as pm so clock repeats after 24 hours so in one hour it is losing three minutes in 20 hours it will lose one hour now when it loses 24 hours it will show the same time okay? because it does not show the date it says shows the time so when it loses 24 hours it will show the same time Suppose like uh, you started a clock and uh, it became late, 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 late. When it becomes 24 hours late, suppose it is 6 p.m. today. Okay, it will show 6 p.m. of yesterday at some point in time. So there is a gap of 24 hours. So how much time will it take to lose 24 hours? So 24 hours it will lose in 480 hours. Okay, so the clock needs 480 hours to lose 24 hours. So that means after 480 hours, it will show same time. Now 480 hours, if you have to convert into the number of days, it is 20 days. Okay, now read this question carefully after 20 days right it is set on january 1st it is set on june 1st so january 1st june 1st the kitne days hote now you might be thinking of leap year okay so we will see leap year as well as non leap year so january has 31 days february has 28 or 29 it should not matter in this case march has 31 april has 30 May has 31 days. Okay, so these are the gap between the two dates. So this is 65990, uh, 120, 151, or 152 days. Okay, so in, in, since it is taking 20 days, so it will show times, correct time, seven times. Okay, after every 20 days, it will show correct time. Since there is a gap of 50, 151 or 152 days, irrespective whether it is leap year or non leap year, it will show seven times. Now, that is known to create such good questions wherein you need to read each and every line very carefully. If you remember, there was a question previously that was uh, on that January thing, the people working on the same day, you had to exclude that day. But here, read the instance, it says on how many instances between including including these two days 12 more on the two dates mentioned so seven times in between and two times on the given dates because you are setting on 1st january and you are setting again on 1st of june so there are a total of nine times so the answer is nine it was a very good question because you had to read the last line carefully. Otherwise, some people might have marked 7 as the answer. Nadim's age is a two-digit number x, squaring which yields a three-digit number whose last digit is y. Consider the statements below. So, this is a data sufficiency question. Statement 1 says y is a prime number. Statement 2 says y is one third of x. You have to tell that what digits are required to find his age. Okay. So let's start with statement 1. It says y is a prime number. So we have some number that is x is a two digit number. Okay. And when you square it, we get a three digit number and the last digit is y. x is a two digit number. Okay, when we square it, we get y as the last digit. y is not the number, y is the last digit. Now, the first statement says y is a prime number. Okay, so from first, we get y can be 2, 3, 5, 7. Now, we know that a number does not, a square does not end in 2, 3 and 7. Okay, this is some number, pro number properties that a square does not end in 2, 3 or 7. Okay, so y should be 5, right? Now, if y is 5, 
now we will use the information that x square is ending in 5 so x can be 15 because 15 square is 225 x can be 25 25 square is 625 35 square is 12 25 which is beyond this range so this gives us two possibilities we have to find his age right so his age could be 15 or 25 based on statement 1 we cannot uniquely determine the answer now let us look at the second statement it says y is one third of x okay. y is one third of x so uh, let's say y is equal to 1 right y is a digit so x x would be 3 not possible right why why we cannot take since x is a two digit number y minimum will have to take 4 so x will be 12 5 6 7 8 9 so these are the possibilities x will be 15 then it is 18 21 and 24 and 27 so x square x square last digit should be y so 144 225 this is 324 so not following the leaf because the last digit should be y 21 square is 441 not following 24 square is 576 which also again does not follow and 27 square is 729 so which is 9 so we have the possible ages as 12 15 or 27 so three possible values of x right so from statement 1 we get two possible values from statement 2 we get three possible values not sufficient when we combine both the statements we get a unique value which is 15 okay because now it satisfies that x square x is 15 x square is 225 and y is 5 and also satisfies that one third of 15 so both statements are it is necessary and sufficient to take one and two together so very good question based on numbers and data sufficiency all right so here's the next question it says that Wilma, Xavier, Diaska, and Zakir are four young friends who have a passion for integers. Okay, interesting friends, some people playing with triangles, some having passion for integers. One day, each of them selects one integer and writes it on a wall. The writing on the wall shows that Xavier and Zakir picked positive integers. Okay, X and Y positive, uh, X and Z positive. Then it says that... Uh, Yaska and Yaska picked a negative one while Wilma's integer is either negative, zero or positive. If their integers are denoted by the first letters of their respective names, the following is true. So we are given four conditions and we have to tell them which of these can w square plus x square plus y square plus z square possibly be evaluated to now this was uh, an erroneous question so let us see what is the mistake in this question let's first solve it because it's an interesting question to solve and see that what would be the mistake here so it says that uh, x and z picked positive integers and x cube plus z is greater than or equal to 2 so we can have w x y and z okay and we are given that they picked greater than 2 now if you add these two right x cube plus z is greater than or equal to 2 and this is less than or equal to 2 so we get this equality okay so that means that is the summation of these two inequalities so if you add these two we get 4 so this means essentially both of them should be 2 then only equality will hold right so let's let's take the possible values so we can have x and z as uh, so uh, let's take x and z as 1 and 1 okay x cube will be 1 and this will be 1 okay then another possibility is we can take x as uh, we can take one of them as 0 and 2 okay but if we take this as 2 it becomes uh, like we can take 0 and 2 also 
but it was given that it is positive integers okay but that does not satisfy in this question so hence this question was i guess wrong and w4 plus y square is less than 2 so we are given that yaska picked a negative number so this can be only minus 1 right and w can be 1 or minus 1 because this will give us uh, because if we take 1 okay that becomes 1 so we have to make w to the power 4 plus y square is less than equal to 2 so if you put 0 it is not a negative 1 if we take minus 2 it becomes 4 it cannot be less than 2 so y can only be minus 1 so we can essentially find the value of y which is minus 1 so this becomes w to the power 4 plus 1 is less than equal to 2 okay so only possibility is it can be 0 or 1 right so uh, plus minus 1 it is possible and y square plus z is greater than equal to 3 so y square is 3 um, y square is 1 and it should be greater than equal to 3 so z 2 satisfies this so essentially the values satisfying are these if you look at all the conditions so it was a wrong question incorrect question see this condition was incorrect that Xavier picked a positive integer now if you see these values w to the power 4 is 1 x cube is 0, 1, 0, y square is 1 and z is 2, okay. And if you see all the conditions, x cube is 0, z is 2, satisfied, w to the power 4 is 1, y square is 1, less than equal to 2, satisfied, y square is 1, z is 2. So, all conditions are satisfied only for these four set of integers. But the thing here given here is Xavier picked a positive integer. Okay, so that is the mistake in this question. Now, when you put these values, w square is 1, x square is 0, y square is 1, z square is 4. So the answer they had given in the response sheet was 6, but this question was incorrect based on this information. Okay, so uh, it was later on scrapped. Had this information given that uh, Xavier, if Xavier was given that it is negative 0 or positive, so then this would have been the answer of this question. So I hope you are enjoying the solutions thus far and uh, got to learn the techniques to solve these questions. Okay, so let's now see the next question. It says that the Madhura Fruits Company is packing four types of fruits into boxes and uh, there are 126 oranges, 162 apples and uh, 198 guavas and 306 pears. The fruits must be packed in such a way that a given box must have only one type of fruit and must contain the same number of fruit units as any other box. What is the minimum number of boxes that must be used? So this is a standard uh, question on HCF and LC in the concept of uh, HCF okay so we need to find the minimum number of boxes if you have to find the minimum number of boxes so we should have maximum fruits in a box and this maximum fruit is HCF highest common factor that is the highest number that will divide this okay now let's see this key what is the HCF of 126 162 and 198 and 306 right so if you divide by 18 this is 18 right? this is 7 9 and 11 and this is mm, 17 into 18 so like you will need 7 boxes for oranges 9 boxes for apples for guavas you will need 11 and for peers, you will need 17 boxes. So the total number of boxes required are 20 plus 24, which is 44. So a typical question on HCF, which uh, if you have prepared number system must have covered. And this is how you solve the question. Shirin draws a circle in her courtyard. She then measures the circle circumference and its diameter with her measuring tape and records them as two integers a and b respectively she finds that a and b are co primes 
that is their greatest common divisor is 1 she also finds the ratio a ratio b to be this okay so repeating endlessly so she draws a diameter find the ratio pi so this ratio is given as a is 3.1416 and so on okay so let's say that uh, a is and so on times of b now if we see that this part is repeating so let us multiply by 1 2 3 zeros into add to 10 so that is equal to 31416.1416 and so on times of b so when we subtract we get 9999a is equal to 314. Now this is 16 minus 313. Okay. So we get that A upon B, A and B, we can get 31413 and this is 9999. Okay. So this is what we get the ratio A and B. Now a common thing that people might have done is they must have subtracted it. Okay, and uh, sorry, I've written the last digits as this. So some people might have subtracted in and got 214. 14, this is one of the options. Some people must have uh, done some mistake in subtraction, right? They must have got uh, or they subtracted, uh, they took 10,000 A and subtracted this and got this as the option. Okay, some people must have directly subtracted uh, 1416 and uh, minus 99999 must have got this as the option. But it is also given that they are co-primes. Okay, greatest common divisor is 1. So, they need to be co-prime. So, we will reduce it. Right. So, they should not have any common factor. Now, let us see 3 plus 1 is 4. 8, 8 plus 4 is 12. So, it is a uh, multiple of 3, 104 and uh, 221, 7, 1 upon 3, 3, 3, 3. Now, this is 5, 5 and 8, 13, not a multiple of 3. Okay. And then we can also have as a multiple of 11. This is like if you see 3, 3, 3, 3 divided by 11 or 33, you can say <coughs> 33 is 33 ones are 33, we get 0, 3, not divisible. So, it is basically 3 into 11 into 101, right. Now, we see that 3 is not a factor of this number, okay, uh, because the sum of digits is not a multiple of 3. 11 se check kar lete, 5 and 6, 7, not a, this is not a multiple, 11 is also not a multiple. 101 se bhi check kar lete just to be sure that our answer is correct. So, when we divide by 101, we get 3, right? We will not get anything. 371, we are not getting it divisible. So, none of these numbers divides. So, this is in the in the shortest, uh, in the smallest form, including the, that is the co-prime numbers. So, A is 10471 and B is triple 4 times 3. So, this is 38 and 71. So, the answer is 7138. If both the sequences x a1 a2 y and x b1 b2 z are in AP and it is given that y is greater than x and z is less than x, then which of the following values can a1 minus a2 upon b1 minus b2 possibly take? Okay. Now, x, a1, a2 and y are in AP, right? And it is given that y is greater than x. So, it is increasing AP. Okay. Now, second thing is given that x, b1, b2 and z are in AP and it is given that uh, 
uh, z is less than x. So z is less than x. That means this is a decreasing AP. Okay. Now we need to find a1 minus a2, a1 minus a2 upon b1 minus b2. Right. Now a1 is less than a2. Is it? It's an increasing number. So a1 is less than a2. So when we subtract a larger number from a smaller number, we get a negative number. And b1 is greater than b2. So when we subtract a smaller number from a larger number, we get a positive number. Okay. And when we divide a positive number by uh, a negative number by a positive number, we get a negative number. See, this negative positive thing should be clear that if you have two positive numbers, I mean, uh, then the ratio will be positive. If both are negative, the ratio will be positive. If one is negative, one is negative positive, the ratio is going to be negative. Now it says possibly take. Possibly take that there can be multiple negative numbers, but in this given question, there is in the given options, there is only one negative number which is minus 3. Okay. So the answer is minus 3, which is the only possible value from these numbers. Okay, so this is a question from functions. Find the domain of the real valued function fx is equal to log 3 log 3x minus 7 upon this function, like under root of 2x square minus 7x plus 6, right? Okay, so domain means for what values the function is valid. Now, we know that log is valid for log, let's say if some value is given as, let's say n, n should be greater than equal to 0, greater than 0, it is not val valid at 0. So that means 3x minus 7 should be greater than 0 or 3x greater than 7 or x greater than 7 by 3, okay. So, uh, this could be a possible answer. Now, this is this we can eliminate. It is saying that it is up to 7 by 3. We are saying that it is greater than 7 by 3. Okay. Then, second thing is this should be first of all, this should not be 0. Okay. Root of 2x square minus 7x plus 6. It should it should be a positive number. First of all, this should be a positive number. Okay. If it is 0, what will happen? See, it can be positive, it can be 0 or it can be negative. Okay. Now, if it is negative, it is not defined. Why it is not defined? Because under root, we cannot have a square root of a negative number, real numbers. Okay. If it is 0, then denominator will become 0. The function is not defined. So, it should be positive. Now let us write this equation 2x square minus 7x plus 6 if we can find the factors of it. So 2 and uh, this is 12, 3 and 4. So x minus 2 and 2x minus 3. Isn't it? So these are the factors that you will get. So x is 2 comma 3 by 2. So it is always a it is always a, uh, it should be, x should be, these are the roots of the equation, okay. And if we need to get, see the roots are 3 by 2 and 2. So, these are the roots of this equation. Now, this function is negative between these roots. It is positive beyond these roots. So, if you have, if you are given a quadratic function, we need to find where it is positive and where it is negative. So, it is negative between these two roots and positive outside these roots and zero at these roots. So, we have to find the range is this and this. So, till minus 3 by, it is, till 3 by 2 it is positive, beyond 2 it is positive. Now, we need to combine both results. This says x is greater than 7 by 3 which is 2.33. So, combining these, we get a single result that x should be beyond this, like x greater than 7 by 3. Because if we take the second condition, like denominator wala condition, x has two possibilities, like it can be less than 3 by 2 and more than 2. But, but uh, in order to make it positive, 
this condition also true x should be greater than 7 by 3 so the range the domain is 7 by 3 to infinity beyond this this also satisfies and this also satisfied between these two it is not satisfied less than 3 by 2 and more than 2 by 2 the denominator is satisfied but this is not satisfied so combining both we get this as the domain of the function a tall tower has its base at point k three points a b c are located at distance of 4 meters 8 meters and 16 meters respectively from point k the angles of elevation of the top of the tower from a and c are complementary what is the angle of elevation of the tower stop from B? Okay, so we are given that there is a tower which is at point K, base is at point K, three points A, B, C, four meters, eight meters, and sixteen meters. Okay, so this is four basically till A it is four, till B it is eight. So here it is four again, and from B to C it is C. Okay, and uh, the angle of elevation of the top of the tower from A and C are complementary. This is A. Okay, now it says that uh, this these angles are complementary. So complementary angle means the total is ninety degree. Okay, so let us say that this is the height is h and we need to find this angle. We are given that these two angles are complementary. So complementary angles uh, we can use is um, tan. Okay, so tan is h upon 4. Okay. We are not using cos or sine because we have to draw, uh, we have to find the hypotenuse and then find it. So we'll use tan, uh, that concept of tan. Tan C is equal to H upon 16 because uh, this K to C is 16. Tan C is H upon 16. Okay. Now we are given that angle A plus angle C is equal to 90 degree. So, we shall use the concept of tan of A plus C, which is equal to tan A plus tan C upon 1 minus tan A tan C. Okay. Now, when we have uh, this concept, right, tan 90 degree is not defined. Okay, because it is infinity or uh, not defined in the sense it is infinity. Now, in order to make it infinity, it should be 0, the base should be 0. So, we get 1 minus tan A is uh, h upon 4. So, we will get 1 minus tan A tan C is equal to 1 minus h upon 4 into h upon 16, which is equal to 0. Okay, why this is 0? We have to because tan 90 is infinity, this is infinity. Infinity will happen when the denominator is 0. So, denominator is 0. So, we will have 1 minus h square upon 64 equals to 0. So, this means that h square is equal to 64 or h is equal to 8. So, we should have a uh, height is always a positive, right? You cannot take that as a negative number. So, height is 8. Now, height is 8. Now, it is asking that what is the angle of elevation of the tower stop from B. So, when we take point B, this is 8, this is also 8. So, it is a 45-45 triangle because in 45-45 triangle, we have tan as 1. So, the angle is 45 degrees. So, typical trigonometry based question and that does ask questions on trigonometry. Okay. All right, let's now uh, see the next question. I have 5 10 rupee coins, 3 20 rupee notes, uh, 10 rupee notes, 5, uh, 3 20 rupee notes and 2 50 rupee notes. Okay, in my wallet, if 3 notes were taken out randomly, 
and simultaneously what is the probability that at least 90 rupees were taken out okay all right so now we have to find that uh, we need to find this probability okay so how do we find this probability uh, the denominator will be in how many ways can we pick three nodes and the numerator will be the cases so one possibility if you pick two 50 rupee notes right so favorable cases count kar lete favorable cases is we pick two 50 rupee notes so then it will be greater than at least 90 rupees that means we need to get greater than equal to 90 rupees okay 250 rupee notes how can we pick we can pick 2c2 there is only one way because there are 250 notes and we pick both the notes that is only one way to pick second scenario could be like if we put 50 rupee notes we have to pick uh, we have to pick three notes okay uh, 2c2 sorry this is 2c2 it is one way to pick uh, 50 rupee notes and then we have five and three 20 rupee notes and in from eight notes we have to pick one more note we have to pick three notes we do not have to pick just two notes okay if we pick 250 rupee notes then obviously it is going to be greater than equal to 90 rupees so 250 rupee notes and eight ways to pick another note because you have to pick three notes so that means one into eight eight ways now we pick one of the notes as 50 rupee note we have to make 90. If we pick 50, 20 and 10, we can reach only 80. If you have to reach 80, we have to pick 50, 20 and 20. So 50 rupee note and 2 20 rupees notes. Now in how many ways can we pick? 50 rupee note can be picked in 2 C1 ways and 2 20 rupee notes. There are 3 20 rupee notes and out of them we have to pick Two 20 rupee notes. So, 3 C2 ways of selecting two notes out of three and 2 C1 of selecting one note 50 rupee note out of 250 rupee notes. So, this is 2 into 3, which is 6. So, total favorable cases are 14. Okay. Now, total ways of uh, taking three notes is 10 C3. 10 notes and a 5, 3, 8 and 2, 10 notes, 10 C3, 10, 9, 8 by 6, 12 into 10, 120. Okay, so the probability is 14 by 120, which is 7 by 60. Okay, so that is the answer to the question, 7 by 60. Okay, so that was... Uh, the question on uh, quant. Now let us do the questions that were based on DI. So here's the first set. Let's uh, read this set. It says that the enrollment of students in thousands at each of the five universities named MPU, MJLPT. You can just take MJLPT. During each of the years from 2014 to 21 is represented in the following chart. Okay, so these are five universities and they are disguised as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we need to find which university is which. Okay, we are given four pieces of information. Okay, uh, now it is given that we are given four information W, X, Y, Z. We need to find the universities using these information. So first says the magnitude of TREUs and MPUs net change in enrollment between 2014 and 2021 are the closest among any two universities. Okay, so let us find the difference between the number of uh, net change. So if we start with this triangle is university one. Okay, so this is somewhere 3200, right? 3000 and 3500, 3200. And this is 3900. So, University 1, it is 700. Okay. University 2, which is the cross based, this is, let us take 1800. And this is somewhere 6200, right. So, 18 to 62, 4400. That is the different change. Okay. Then, University 3 is the circle one. This is 500. 
and ends in 400 or 450 right so let us take uh, 400 and take the difference as 100 we are not supposed to calculate the exact values we have to do some approximations maybe this is not exactly uh, what we took as 3900 maybe it is 3850 3880 anything similarly university 4 is that uh, quadrilateral one this uh, rhombus one this is 4000 and ends in somewhere around 3700 3750 so let us take 3700 300 as the difference university 5 is the square one this starts with 6500 and ends with somewhere around 3200 so difference is 3300 so this these are rough calculations okay now the first statement says that the magnitudes of tru's and mpu's net changes are the closest so closest net change we see in university 3 and 4 okay so we will disguise them as 1 2 3 4 5 so t and m are among 3 and 4 ltu had the same enrollment in consecutive years at least twice between 2014 and 21 okay now uh, from this we know that ltu cannot be one of these so we have to take 1 2 or 5 okay now if you clearly see this university has same number here isn't it so let us first mark uh, the two universities that have uh, same change so this was one of the universities and uh, so we will not count this one and the other university was university 4 so these are counted so we have to look at the other universities so uh, it says ltu had same enrollment in consecutive years at least twice between 2014 and 2021 once twice you see two times so ltu is this triangle one which is university one so this is l right the increase in JSU's enrollment to 2000, from 2015 to 2019 is about 50% of TRU's enrollment in 2020. Okay. JSU, now TRU has to be out of 3 or 4. Okay. So let us say TRU is 3 or 4, which is, so let us mark this university as L. TRU is one of these two. So it says that. TRU's total enrollment in 2020. So, if this is somewhere around 700, is 50% Like this is 700, is 50% 350. So, it says the increase in JSUs from 2015 to 19 is around 350. Okay. So, if we see this, this is uh, 15 and 19, 15 to 19. So, J has to be out of these, 15 is this year and 19 is this year. Now, the difference is not uh, 350, it is much more in both the cases, isn't it? So, that means this is not TRU, this has to be M and this has to be TRU, okay? Now, let us see this, is 50% kitna hai? TRU's total enrollment in 2020 is 5000. Exact 5000 is 50% at 2500. So, let us see which of these has a difference of 2500 in these two years. So, this is somewhere 6400 and this is somewhere 50, 48, right? So, difference is 16. So, this may not be the answer. Now, let us see this. This is 26 and this if we see it is close to 51 isn't it 26 51 the difference is 2500 isn't it and that matches this number so this university is ltu uh, this is jsu's enrollment so this is jsu and this university uh, your uh, so we get four universities uh, m is done j l t and P is the remaining university, PKU. So, this is P. Okay, so we can mark these universities. L is university 1. Okay, and uh, this is 
uh, j is the crossed one that is 2 l j p is fifth one and uh, this uh, diamond one is t which is university 4 and this is m l j m t p so we can get this okay now there was one interesting question also which of the following information is not needed right now if you see the fourth information it says uh, the enrollment in one of ltu and pq had a steady decline between 2014 and 2021 okay while the enrollment in the other had no decline between any two consecutive years in the same period okay so decline in ltu and pq suppose we had not determined this information from from first second we had suppose we we do not have information why okay so from first and second we had just figured out that these are the universities so let us ignore y and let us see z is z required to answer the question it says the enrollment in one of ltu and pq pku had a steady decline between 2014 and 21 steady decline is in this university and uh, only this university right so it says that ltu and pq so it says that it is l or p but we have already determined that this is l so this will be p okay because from this we had figured out this that this is ltu now it says while the enrollment in the other had no decline between any two consecutive years in the same period so l we already know that uh, this was the university and uh, it had no decline so we get this as j but we are unable to find t and m so x w x z are not sufficient but w x and y are required so there was one of the questions which asked which of the following statements is not sufficient okay <clears throat> this was a very beautiful set good data interpretation typical uh, wherein you need to uh, grind the data very well and then uh, get the result okay so here's the one so we figured out ljm tp that is the order ljm tp which of the five universities can university four possibly be university four is T R U. Sorry. Which university's enrollment was around twice that of LTU in 2015? So L J M T P. So it says twice that of LTU in 2014. LTU is University One, which is 3200. Okay, 3200. 6400 like 64 or 65 it is saying around twice right so if you take 3250 so this is that university this university is university 5 which is university p so it is only pk use so we can determine uniquely which among the pieces of information mentioned below if removed will not prevent us from uniquely identifying the five universities so we saw that while uh, finding itself that the statement z was not needed when we use w x y we were able to find all the universities okay so z was not needed that is redundant so that was the solution to this set so i hope you are enjoying the solutions thus far please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends who ask for past year z solutions this is one of the best uh, methods they, they would find anywhere. Let's now move on to the next question. So this is again a DI set and it says that uh, there is a pencil maker that ships pencils in boxes of size 50, 100 and 200. Due to packaging issues, some pencils break. About the 20 boxes he has supplied to a shop, the following information is available. Box numbers 1 to 6 have 50 pencils. Okay, 1 to 6 have 50 pencils. 7 to 16 have 100 pencils. And 17 to 20 have 200 pencils. Okay. 
some pencils break so there are three sizes 50 100 and 200 so these are the number of pencils like first six will have 50 pencils 7 to 16 will have 100 pencils and 7, 7 to 16 100 and 17 to 20 200 pencils now it says no box has less than 5 percent or more than 20 percent of the broken pencils okay so the number of broken pencils we can find the range of this number using the given data that uh, it is between 5 and 20 percent so let us find 5 and 20 percent of these and get the numbers and then we can find out the number of broken pencils right so it says 5 percent is 2.5 20 percent is 10 5 and 20 and this is uh, between 10 and 40 now see number of broken pencils is going to be an integer number right so it is between like it can be 3 also so 2.5 to 10 this is the limit so basically it can be 3 to 9 it can be 6 to 19 because it is not less than 5 percent so it should be uh, so greater than equal to is also possible so uh, we will take these ranges okay it should not exceed so it will be 3 to 10 basically 3 to 10 5 to 20 10 to 40 that is the range following is the frequency table of the number of broken pencils for the 20 boxes right now we have frequency table that is one two uh, like one uh, one means that uh, there is one box that has five pencils broken okay there are two boxes that have somewhere around so we will write these numbers five six seven this is nine ten eleven 15, 16, this is 19, 20, this is 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, okay. So, what we have to do is, we have to answer based on this data. Now, we will find out which box do they belong to, right. So, let us categorize this as A, B and C, okay. So, let us look at the questions and then we will answer the questions accordingly. You have understood that A category A has 1 to 6 lies in the box number 1 to 6 has 50 pencils and the number of broken pencils has to be between 3 to 10. Category B has 100 pencils and it lies in the box numbers 7 to 16 and the number of broken pencils is 5 to 20. Okay, So let's look at the questions and then see it. So it says which of the following <coughs> can possibly be the sequence of the number of broken pencils in boxes 7 to 16 right so we need to find the number of broken pencils right so let us uh, <coughs> use this case so this is 19 20 29 probably we'll have to solve for those values and find out so we know that uh, category A, B, C that is easy to understand. A में 3 to 10 हो सकते हैं, 5 to 20 and this can category C will be uh, we have 10 to 40. Okay and how many boxes are there? It says that <coughs> uh, 6 boxes, 10 boxes and 4 boxes. So, these all belong to C for sure, right, because 29 can only happen in this. So, all these are C, 20 can happen in this also and for this also, okay. So, now, uh, and we have 5 broken pencils, 5 can happen in this also. So, we need to find out that how many are there in, how many are there in, this category, category B. So, 29 is not possible in this for sure. And we have to have uh, 6 numbers from 3 to 10. Now, if you count this, there is 1, 2 and 1, 2 and 4, that is 7 numbers. Does it say that... Uh, no box has less than 5%. So, it has to be less than 5% means greater than or equal to. So, there are 7 boxes. So, A has to have like category A 
should have out of these one three seven and ten so category a should be within this okay and category b can be from five to twenty so category a and b together uh, have 70 so one of one of c like one of category c has to be out of these numbers right so we cannot have uh, we may have 320s so we will have to see like how many numbers can we adjust in this category so this is a tricky question you have to see through the options so if we see from 1 to 10 We'll find out that how many numbers are there. So uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 3 plus 4, 7, 7 is 10 and uh, there are 10 such numbers. So we can give maximum, like we can, we have to have 6 numbers still here, right? So in this case, we can have maximum 4 numbers in this category, okay? So if we see we have five numbers so we can reject this case five single digit numbers is not possible because we have to have 10 numbers of single digit and single digit six out of them should be of category a so category b can have maximum four so this is not possible okay so these two are rejected now in this case if we see like three are already present okay so we need to have three times 20 because uh, sorry, we cannot have, uh, this looks possible that, so if we have 4 here, that is satisfying this, 4 satisfied, 6 satisfied, so 11, 15, 15, 19, we should have 10 numbers, so 4 and 6 and 6. So one of the numbers missing is, so this requires very careful, uh, so if we take 4 7s here, so that is satisfying, 11, 15, 15, so 2 15s are gone, 19 and 2 of the 20s are taken. So 120 goes to, so there is one more 20 which goes to category C. So this is a possible option. Let us explore the other options. So 7799 is taken. So this ground is covered less than 10. Vala. <coughs> Let's use another pen for option C. So 7799 is covered in this. So 4 will be of category A. Then uh, 6 will be of category A. Then 11 is covered. Okay. 13 is, see number 13 is not present. So we can eliminate this case easily. Let's look at option E, 5, triple 6, so 4 are taken care of, this category A is done. Now we will look, 18 is covered, 11 is covered, 15, 2 times is covered, okay, then we have 3 times 20, okay, and this gives us This gives us 19 here. So this is done. 2 times of 15 is done. 3 times of 20 is done. So this goes to category C. That is possible. And 5 triple 6. 5. Okay. 6 comes only 2 times. So this has a mistake that 6 has come 3 times. So this is also not possible. So it was, it required a lot of time to eliminate options. Actually, the first option itself was correct, but you have to check through all the options. Right. So we get that. <coughs> the answer is option A. <coughs> Why other options are rejected? This contains 13, which is not possible. <coughs> this contains 6 3 times, which is not possible. This contains five numbers, single digit numbers, which is not possible because it can have maximum four single digit numbers. Okay, so we eliminated three cases and this 
was not possible because uh, we have to have uh, 10 numbers if we are assigning 6 here we are assigning here we cannot assign a single digit number to c so this is also eliminated so we get this as the answer option a which of the following cannot be inferred conclusively from the given information okay so we have to tell which of the following cannot be inferred now it says three of the boxes numbered 17 to 21 have 29 31 and 33 this is what we inferred that these have to be category c it is saying that which of the following cannot be inferred so this can be inferred no boxes numbered 1 to 6 has more broken points than any boxes numbered 17 to 20. This is true because category A has 3 to 10 broken pencils and category C has uh, 10 to 40. Okay, that was uh, the limit. So, it cannot have more than this category. So, this can be inferred easily. A box with the highest percentage of break, broken pencils has 100 pencils. Okay. A was 50 category, B was 100, and C was 200. Okay. So, if we see these percentages, right, this is uh, 29 out of 100, 29 out of, uh, sorry, 200. Yeah, this is 31 out of 200. This is 33 out of 200. So 14.5 percent. This is 15.5 percent. This is 16.5 percent. If you look at this number, this has to be category. I mean, there has to be one pencil in category B also. Minimum, there have to be two. This this cannot be category A. This has to be category B or C. Okay, one pencil maybe, but there is at least one pencil here. So it is 20 percent of category B. So we can say that highest percentage is 100 pencils. Four of the boxes numbered 7 to 16 have less than 10 broken pencils. So there are 10, num 10 boxes that have less than 10 broken pencils. Six of them belong to category A. So four of them have to belong to category B. Sorry. Category A is 6. So four will come here. So this is also inferred. Now the remaining option should be the answer. But let us check exactly three boxes have 20% broken pencils. Okay, so see 20 percent broken pencils means if it is category A 10 broken pencils, if it is category B 20, category C 40. There is no box with this. There is no box with 10 broken pencils. There are three boxes with 20 broken pencils, but not necessary that all three are B. It can be two of B and one of category C or it can be it is saying that it cannot be inferred conclusively. We cannot conclude this. Rest of the inferences can be concluded from the given information. Okay, so this was the answer. So quite difficult set to understand and required a lot of data crunching. Let's look at the next question. Suppose that additionally it is known that the number of broken pencils in boxes 17 to 20 is in increasing order. Which among the following additional information, if true, is not sufficient to uniquely know the number of defective pencils in each of the boxes numbered 17 to 20. Okay, so one information is given. It is asked which of these is not sufficient to <coughs> give the number, right? Now let us understand this. <coughs> so basically, numbered 17 to 20 is category C. But this is not needed. Right? Number of broken pencils in 17 to 20 is in increasing order. We already know that this is category C, C, C. So this is 29, this is 30, and this is 33. Now it is saying which of the following is not sufficient. So we will check each of these. It says boxes 17 to 20 contain a total of 108 defective pencils. Okay, so this is 29, 60, and 93. So total. 93 for these so if we subtract from 108 we get 15 so if we get 15 that this one of the boxes is of category c it is sufficient so it is saying not sufficient box number 17 contains more defective pencils than any box from box number 1 to 14 okay now box number 1 to 14 see 
category C is 17 to 20. So we have 14, 15, 16. Okay, these are of category B. And this is category C. So anyways, 18 to 20, we already know the values, right? It says that 17 contains more defective pencils. So if 17 is out of these three, then obviously it will contain more. But 17 is this. So it should contain more than any of the pencils in 1 to 14. Okay. So if this is 20, then obviously 15 and 16 will be uh, 15 and 16 will be out of these. Right. And we were given that if you remember that it was given that they are arranged in uh, okay it is not even that they are in arranged in ascending order due to packaging issues some bags the following information is available okay it is not given that they are arranged in ascending okay so not to worry so if two of these have uh, Huh, so, uh, oh, sorry, this question is given that they are in increasing order, this particular question. So, if 15 and 16, 17 is more than 14. Okay, so then 17 can only be, suppose if we take 17 as 19 pencils. So, 14, 15, 16 have to be 20. That is not possible. Right, see, 18 to 20 are these. So, 17 has to be, uh, 17 is this. Right, and 17 will automatically contain more than 14. So, this is sufficient right it is saying not sufficient boxes 7 to 16 contain a total of 133 defective pencils and boxes 11 to 16 contain a total of 101 defective pencils boxes 7 to 16 contain a total of <coughs> 124 defective pencils now it is saying that <coughs> these are 17 to 20 so one of them is c and the rest are 2 are b So we will have to add all these numbers to understand these three numbers, right? So uh, only this 70 to 20 is in increasing order, not others. Now let us see the number of defective pencils of, of the remaining total. So number of defective pencil is 1 into 5, then 2 into 6, 3 into 4 into 4 numbers and 7, and then 9 into 3. And then we have 1 into 11, then 15 into 2, 19 into 1, and 2 into 20. So this is the total number of defective pencils till this range. Not We have to exclude this, that is category C that we already know. 5 plus 12 plus 28 plus 27 plus 11 plus 30 plus 19 plus 14 so this is 70 70 30 100 100 and this is 55 60 160 172 we get the total as 172 so 172 is the total number of pencils from category a and category b total pencils is 172 it says box 7 to 16 contain 133 Okay, so that means they contain 133, A should contain 39. Okay, now let us see the minimum possible values. Okay, what is that? Uh, okay, so this is not even, the, sorry, this is not necessary that it is C. Okay, it can be, uh, C can be anywhere. So, uh, total is 192 essentially, including this, this is 192. We have to find out that A, B, category A all pencils, category B all pencils and C ka one pencil, take care, one, one box of C, total is 192, okay. So it says box number 7 to 16 contain a total of 133. So it says category B contains 133. Now A has to be within these values. Okay, does it give us the value of uh, the pencils? So, category A can be 5 plus 12. 
So what we will do? We will find the number of pencils in this C category A range is 3 to 10. So we will find the number of pencils in this total range is 190 to 133 is this. Okay, and we need to get the number possible in A. So 5, 12, uh, 17, 17 plus 55 is 72. So we can have maximum 72 here. And uh, let's say Seven to sixteen container total of one thirty three. Thirty three. Then we need to get a number here and then get a number here. Hundred and one. Eleven to sixteen is hundred and one. So that means one to ten is this, and uh, then next six is one to ten. If we calculate, this is seventy two. Okay. 5, 12, 17 and uh, 45, 72. 72 is from 1 to 10. And if 11 to 16 contain 101, that is 173. So, uh, 17 will contain 20. Okay, this is uh, 1 to 16. So, this is anyway sufficient. 7 to 16 contain a total of 124 or 133. That is the challenge here. So, if they contain 133, will we get a unique possible value for seventeen? So this is sufficient, 17 to 20 contain a total of 108 defective pencils. This is 93, so this is 15. This is sufficient, this is sufficient, this is also sufficient. One of these has to be the answer, 133 or 124. I think as far as I remember, this question was scrapped possibly because uh, two values were possible for this question or let me check the solution. So 133 we need to find in category B and we can give a maximum of 72 here and we have to give at least 10 here. So we have the possible values as 11, 15, 19 or 20. So four possible values. So from first we can determine from second also we can say that it is 20. Okay, if it is, uh, this gives us 17 more, that is 20 pencils. Okay, uh, in this case we will have to see the possibilities. So, if we take 11, 15, 19, 20. So, uh, we have to uniquely determine in 17 to 20. A will have a some fixed number of pencils. So if we see the difference as 9, 11, 21, 44, this gives us 48 in both the cases, which looks same. So I think this question was scrapped. As far as I remember, this question was scrapped. And uh, right now I'm unable to figure out key how to solve this. So let's just skip it for now and see the next question. So this was another set. It says that uh, the given candlestick chart depicts the prices of a particular stock over 10 consecutive days. A candlestick comprises a rectangular box pieced by a line. The top and bottom ends of the line respectively indicate the maximum and the minimum prices of the stock on that day. So top is max and bottom is minimum. 
while the horizontal edges of the rectangle correspond to the stock's opening and closing so this is opening and closing right uh, the edges of the rectangle so top this is top max this is min <coughs> max and min so it says the uh, horizontal edges respond to opening and closing if the rectangle is wide the opening price is lower than the closing price so this is opening and closing okay and if the rectangle is black then it is the other way around so this is the opening and closing so that means the share fell in case of black and in case of white it went down and this is the minimum and maximum and so was a simpler question as compared to the previous set that we just saw so it says <coughs> which day saw the maximum percentage increase in the stock price at the closing from the opening so maximum percentage change from the opening so black is all down so all these options get eliminated right it is only about these four days so 1 2 3 or 10 okay 1 2 and 10 we need to compare 10 we see there is only little change so 10 gets eliminated it is about day 1 and day 2 so if we see it is somewhere uh, 2 3 6 4 so let us find the change in this right we just need to find the approximate change 2 3 6 5 or since it is like 2 3 so let us take this 65 and this is <coughs> 95 so increase of 30 okay in this case it is 2 3 9 5 and it is 24 25 so increase of 30 on both days it is increasing by 30 but if the base is smaller the percentage change will be more so here the percentage change will be the maximum so it is day one easy question to attempt so ideally one should have attempted this set and done because all the other remaining sets one more set is there that is also a difficult one what is the highest magnitude of change over two consecutive days for example day one to day three or day five to day seven in the maximum price uh, over two consecutive days maximum price touched by the stock during the 10 day period okay so we have to find the maximum change between any of the two days between over two consecutive days right so we have to find day one to day three or day five to day seven so <coughs> we need to say that the maximum difference so if we see one two three this was the closing price so this gap is less than two units so one two and uh, one two units is 40 so less than 40 this to this uh, here that is the difference less than 40 so let us find the biggest difference so we can easily see that the dis biggest difference is between these two days okay so the price trend ended here and ended here so this 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 is two three nine zero and this is two three one zero approximately so approximate difference is of 80 so we have to find the highest change in two of the days right it says that day one to day three or day five to day seven so like this we need to find the maximum so this we can observe easily that the biggest dip is here so it ended at two three nine zeros approximately two three one zero so difference is of 80 points on which day is the ratio of maximum price to the opening price the highest across all the 10 days so maximum uh, to the maximum price to the opening price so maximum is the top line and opening price is the bottom line okay so if max to open we need to have to find the highest okay so this means that open should be low and max should be high okay so we will ignore these because in this case open is at a higher order so we have to check for 1 2 3 or 10 now if the maximum is very high so if you look at this graph in this case maximum is very high as compared to the open one in this case open max i mean you can find the ratios though okay uh, and then get the result so in this case this is 2 3 6 5 and it is 2 4 
one five. So increase of fifty upon this. In this case, it is two three. In this case, it is very less. In this case, it is less than fifty. Okay, two lines. One line is twenty less than fifty. In this case, if you see the difference, this is two two eight zero, and this is two three three zero. There is an increase of fifty upon two two eight zero. So numerator is same in both the cases, and denominator is smaller. So this value is larger. So it is on day ten. So this was a simple set, and one should have attempted this in the exam. Let's look at the next set, which was a logical DI, which you generally get in CAT. So it says that there is uh, there are ten multiple choice questions labeled Q one to Q ten respectively. Each question had four answer options A, B, C, and D, of which only one and one was correct answer. For each correct answer, the candidate obtained one mark, and there were no negative marks for wrong answers. Six candidates they chose answers. And uh, total marks obtained by each one of them is given in this table. Okay, so we need to find out what is the answer to which of the questions. Now, in such kind of sets, we need to find some extreme values. Extreme values in the sense that if people are scoring very high or are scoring very low, so it says there are four options A, B, C, D. Only one answer is correct. Let us look at Kader and Sabrajit. And see how they have marked the answers and got seven and seven. Okay, so he marks A, D, A, B, A, A, C, B, C, C, D, C, B, A, D, 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 B, A, A. Now let us think of a logical thing, right? If some people, some person is stopping, that means they should get the same answers, isn't it? If two people are getting hundred marks, that means they must have marked both the answers correct. Or let's say ten marks. If two people are getting nine marks, so most of their answers should be common, isn't it? So if two people are getting seven and seven, total fourteen answers. Okay, there are only ten correct answers. That means four correct answers should match, right? Minimum four correct answers should match. How many answers are matching? This is not matching. This is not matching. This is matching. This is not matching. This is matching. Not matching. Not matching, matching, not matching, and matching. So only four answers are matching. So this means all these four questions should be correct because only four answers can match. Like maximum, minimum four answers should match. Fourteen answers, है ना? A person is getting seven correct, another is getting seven correct. So they should give fourteen correct answers. There are ten questions, so four should be common. Minimum four. It can be more than four also. But we are getting that only four answers are matching. So this means the answer to this question is A, the answer to this question is C, the answer to this question is D, and the answer question A. Okay, that is how we will start. So let's mark the people who got it right, and let's mark who got it wrong. So we'll have to do some uh, tabulation work in this. So logical DI, a tough one. D is correct and uh, A is correct, right? Now they have got, uh, they have to get three more marks, right? Uh, in order to, so let's just put tick also. If they get, if someone gets an answer right, we'll put tick also and then find out the possible answers to the questions. Right? So they need to get three more answers. This person also needs to get three more answers correct. Okay, so now this person has got one answer correct. Should get only one of these correct remaining questions. This person has got one answer correct. Should get four answers correct out of the remaining questions. This person has got three, four. Okay, so this is done. This person has no answers correct thus far. So out of the remaining, should get three answers. This person also has not got got any answer correct. Should get Two answers correct out of the remaining ones. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this person has to get four answers correct. Okay. If this person see, if you see these two ones, these three answers, first three questions. 
all of them both of them have marked same answer okay now suppose if one of them gets right so this person will get one marks okay if two of them get right so this person will get two marks which is not possible if all three of them are right this person cannot get uh, three marks so only one of them can be right and one of them has to be right because if all of them are wrong suppose all these three answers are wrong now this person can get only three marks cannot get four marks okay so this person has to get four marks so one of the questions should be right so let us just mark it for now one of the questions should be right if two questions are right this person will get two marks which is not possible so this means this person gets pavan gets all these three correct d a b so we can write that this is d this is a this is b so d a b is correct then we can put the answers and find out the further scores what activity we did just now we will have to reduce this also so this person has to get one more answer now and this person has to get one two okay he got uh, sorry this was already counted so this person has to get d a b 6 7 and 9 so he got one more correct so he has to get two more correct now this person has got one correct and two correct so this person has to get one more correct this person got one correct and so this person has to get one more correct answers of the remaining answers and these people also got some answers correct so d a b this person got two answers right so you should get only one more right and we have figured out for these people okay now we will just mark these as incorrect ones so we are left with question number 1 2 and 4 only three questions are left okay out of these one of them has to be correct okay this person should get two correct and this person one 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 all of them should get one one each and this person has to get two correct okay suppose he gets a and a correct okay let's see that we have to find which two will be correct so if a and a are correct that means this person will get one two correct okay and this should be incorrect this then in that case this person gets two this person gets one that is done this person gets zero and this person gets one and this is incorrect right and then this answer should be b because in kabhi one one karne so this answer should be if suppose this is a let us take this case if this is a this is a so these people get one two marks done okay this person has got one marks done this person has got uh, it has to get one more mark and this person has to get one more mark so this is done now this answer should be b but if this answer is b this person will get one mark this person will get one mark done this person will get one mark this person will get one extra mark now this person will have one two three correct responses so these this case is not possible we cannot have the first two answers as a and a okay so this person cannot get both of them correct let us say this person gets first and third correct first and fourth correct and gets this one wrong okay so we'll again do the same uh, calculations too much calculations required so in this case the answer should be a b and c because these people are getting it correct so if it is a b c this these people will get one one correct this person will get two correct this person gets one correct done this person gets one one correct that is also done this person gets one correct that is also done so the answer should be a b c <coughs> you can try these two and eliminate so let us take this case also and eliminate it so let us say the answers are this is incorrect 
and the other two are correct. So let us say this is uh, A and this is C and this is D. So D A C अगर लेंगे तो क्या होगा? This person will get one correct. This person will get one correct. D A C this person gets the remaining two correct. D A C will get does not get any correct. So this is not possible. So this D A C वाला is not possible. So the answer that we will get is A B A C. So uh, this also is clarified. So A B A C. Now just to clarify, just see that if that everything is matching. Okay, so this person has got one, two, two correct. So total वाला देख लेते हैं, two correct, fine. One, two, three, four, five correct, fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fine. One, two, three, fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is also correct. And one and two. So that is the answer. So uh, a very difficult set to attempt. The typical cat type set, and one should have ideally avoided the, such a set in the exam. So the answer is A B A C C D A D B A. Okay. So what is the correct answer for question five? So this I think we determined previously itself when we uh, when we determined for these two common answers. So you could have answered this and moved on. So the answer is C. Said which of these questions D is the correct answer? So D is correct answer to six and eight, and among the given options, only eight has it. A back C D A D B A. Let us match from the original one. C D A D B A. Okay, which of these questions witness the least number of students answering correctly? Okay, so we have two, four, five, three, four, and ten. So we have to check two, three, four, five, uh, and ten. Okay, we have to see that how many of them. So B is answered. This is answered by three people. Definitely won't be the answer. This is answered by three people. Okay, so two and four cannot be the answers. Uh, question number, sorry, two and three cannot be the answers. So four should also not be the answer. Four is answered by, in fact, okay, four is answered by just one person. Okay, so four is answered by one person, and every answer is. Correct of at least one person. Five is answered by one, two, three people. Okay, so that is also not the answer. Ten is answered by one, two people. So ten is also not the answer. The answer is question four, which is answered by only one person correctly. Okay, so that was the solution. So tedious sets, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the solution of this paper. So there were uh, the quant part was easy. and uh, if we talk about uh, the di part which was logical and calculation intensive so ideally one should have attempted the quant questions attempted one or two of the di sets especially that stock wala set was easy to do and the university two sets one should have done and rest of the quant questions to ace in this paper because this would have taken a lot of time to attempt in case you are preparing for cat 2024 and are looking for an online uh, preparation platform you can enroll in our cat courses okay which has recently started it covers uh, live classes recorded concept videos topic wise practice sheets there is a dedicated doubt resolution group for students who are enrolled in the course it will also include full length mocks and section wise tests as well and in case you are preparing on a sectional basis if you want just to enroll for lr or quant or verbal you can enroll that way as well 
So this was the solution to that 2022 QADI. Uh, you saw that it was a cruel sum, especially the DI part was very lengthy. Uh, the set, the pencil set and uh, this last one response sheet set was very difficult. The other two sets were doable university and the stock graph rest quant part was mostly easy and could have been done well on the paper so this was the solution i hope you found it useful so don't forget to like this video